Hi guys, it's Nat here again. I'm on for, I think it's my fifth scrap busting video. So the reason why I'm doing these is because we all have scraps, obviously. I really need to make lots of embellishments and I like to use up my scraps. So I thought I'd create a playlist on my YouTube that is just my scrap busting videos. And it's a, as much for me as for anyone else so that when I've got all these scraps I can look through all the videos I've made on the scrap busting ones and pick what I want to do with them. So um, none of these ideas are new. Um, you will see them all over the place. So... Um, yeah, I think I've said before, I don't ever say that something's a new idea that's come from me because I don't know. People were doing all this jazz way before YouTube, so, you know, it's all been done before. Um, yeah, so today I am working on the bigger bits instead of the long strips. And what I want to do is make little journaling spots of interest. So I might just start with these two bits. So I've got this piece here. Sorry, it's very dark again over here, I know. And also you will find when I um, use this camera, it's really loud in comparison to when I get back onto the iPod. So I apologize for that. And it means that you probably have to adjust the sound halfway through or whatever. It's annoying. So what I'm going to do is just chop these two sizes that I like. So I'll have some that are rectangles and some that are more square. You can of course rip them. I'll make these ones a little bit bigger. So I've got spots like this. And what I'm going to do basically, very easy, is just sew around the edges. And that will create little journaling spots. Just little bits of um, interest that we can add to pages, envelopes, all that sort of thing as usual. So we'll start with this smaller one. Just check what stitch I'm on. Looks like I'm on straight stitch, so we'll just go with that. do some more so as you can see it just creates a nice little square that I've sewn around so nothing too special but the sewing just adds that nice sort of embellishment to a little spot that's already now to stick on to the back of a tag front of an envelope just on a page somewhere so I'll do some more so I'll do this big one and this time I'm gonna go around it twice I try messy stitch and it doesn't work too well So I'm purposely trying not to be too straight. <laughs> it's still coming out pretty straight. <laughs> but if I try and go too messy, I'll go off the off the page. <laughs> So what I'm going to do this time is just go around it twice and try not to go over the other stitch the whole way so it just adds a bit of interest, messy stitching. out like that and then of course you can change the stitches up to add some difference so like I did with the long ones I'll do some that's straight for a bit and then a bit of zigzag now I'm learning to change my stitch to zigzag when the needles up because yesterday I was changing it while the needle was down and it sort of rips the paper a little bit when it moves I said I should have read the instructions rather than just learning things the hard way. So put the width to three, change it to zigzag. Just 
do a few stitches. Now I'll change it back to straight again. Probably should change my length when I go to do the zigzag because it's very um, wide in between them. Now when you pull it out, you've got to pull carefully because sometimes I pull it and it rips the paper where the stitches are. So that just adds a bit of interest there. So this one I might just zigzag the whole way, but I will make the width 3, the length back to 2, and on to zigzag. great to have all of these embellishments ready to go. The reason why I'm doing two of these scrap busting videos so close together is because I want the embellishments that I'm making at the moment for a recent project so I can finish it off. So it's a zigzag one that looks pretty cool on the bigger journaling spot. back under there make sure it's not wrapped around so I'm going to finish these last couple and then I'll be back on my iPad to show you so here I am again with my big kerfuffle of journaling spots and stuff so I've got to cut all of these apart again I leave tails and then decide whether I want them on there or off there when I decide where I'm putting them That one you can see that's what happens when you pull try and pull the paper without pulling the thread as well just um, pulls that end off I can use that in a personal journey though journal journey <laughs> might use that in my um, virus journal because that one's really daggy I shall be on to show you an update on that soon too because I've been working hard in that lately because we've had so much going on and I'm stuck back in I just finished April last night, so I've got some catching up to do in that journal. here that I've ripped a bit and this one <laughs> I was doing well wasn't I might just chop that bit off All right, put my threads over there so there's that one. That one's got the double stitching. I think that's one of my favourite looks. So what we'd do is you could put that like a label or a little journaling spot on the front of something or if it's a tag on the back so that you can write on it. So that's what I'll be doing with those. And these long ones, these would be perfect for on the back of tags. So I've got a whole heap. I did them in brown. And that's sort of me trying to be messy. And then I've got some like this in black. So there's a whole heap there. It doesn't take long at all to whip them through. Try out your different stitches and then have heaps and heaps of little journaling spots and little labels. You could even do your little label shape. I might end up doing that with a whole lot of my long strips. Um, so around them so they're like little labels or book plates that I can use. 
So what I've been doing is I've just grabbed this. I've got this awful covered box from the second hand shop full of something once. So I've decided that I'm going to use that to put all my paper scrappy things that I've been making. So it's got my ruffles, it's got the long ones that I did the other day. So when I've got a project that's looking for the more vintage style and scrappy style, I can just head into this box now and pull a few bits and pieces out, which will be really handy. So the aim is, you know, once a week, I'm gonna sit down with my scraps. So a whole lot of this sort of stuff and fill up this box so I'll have heaps to use. So I hope that's inspired some of you somewhat to get your scraps out and get on your sewing machine. Take care, everyone, and I will see you again soon. Bye.